Hey fam, it's Mariah, and welcome to Calvary Conversations, where we simplify God's Word to reach today's culture by casting down arguments through real, radical testimonies and biblical conversations. Now let's get started. Welcome to Calvary Conversations. My name is David Catalano, and today we're going to be jump-starting our series, Christianity 101. So we're going to have several people um, talking about what it means to be a Christian and the different aspects of Christianity. So um, today the topic I'm bringing to you guys is what does it mean to be a Christian or uh, what does it mean to choose Christ? And so um, before we start, I'd love to just start with prayer. Look, I just pray that uh, as I speak today, God, it would just be your word, Lord that you would speak through your word, Lord, uh, and and just give me the words to say, Lord. And I also just pray I'd be able to present it in a well, concise way, God. And just pray for those that are listening, God, that your word would speak to their hearts, Lord. It would convict them where they need to be convicted, and it would encourage them where they need to be encouraged, God. And I pray, Lord, through today's message, uh, you would move in the hearts of those listening to build them up in their relationship with you or to help them to make the choice of choosing you. Just pray for this in your mighty name, Jesus Christ. Amen. So today I'm going to be uh, reading from Deuteronomy 30. So if you have your Bibles, I encourage you guys to pull them out and hopefully be able to follow along with some of the verses I'm going to be talking about today. So let's start by reading uh, reading the verses we're going to be talking about today. And that is Deuteronomy. um, It is Deuteronomy 30, 19 through 20. And uh, one thing I love is I just love the idea of holding our Bible up and saying, you know what, I believe this to be God's ultimate truth and authority. So if you have your Bible, just remember that this is God's ultimate truth and authority. This is what we base our life on. So let's start uh, reading. It says, today I've given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses, Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. And if you love and obey the Lord, you will live long in the land the Lord swore to give your ancestors Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. So, I wanted to, I'm going to be kind of breaking down uh, just a couple of the verses, verse by verse, and just kind of expanding on them. So uh, the first verse I want to expand on today is, today I've given you the choice between life and death, between blessings and curses. And to start with that, I want to contrast, you know, this idea of living a blessed life versus living a life of curses. And the way I explain that is when we follow God's word, it's like driving on the right side of the road right? When we have a car and we're driving on the right side of the road and we're following the instructions of what we're supposed to do when we're driving, then there's, we're going to be blessed. We're going to be able to get to the places we need to go. But when we're going against God's will, when we're on the wrong side of the road, we're going against all of the structures in place that is told to us when we're driving, then we're going to be getting in car accidents. We're going to be running over pedestrians. We're going to be hurting people or being more prone to get hurt. You know, and so that's one of the things is, uh, you know, between life and death, when we follow the word of God, we have more opportunity for life. But when we aren't following the word of God, then we are opening ourselves up to destruction. And so that's one thing I wanted to talk about is John 10, 10. It says that uh, the thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy. But I, and that's Jesus talking, came that they may have life and have it abundantly. And that's one thing I want to just say is part of being a Christian is being able to have life abundantly. You know, a lot of the times we talk about just all the bad things, the things that Christians aren't supposed to do. But I believe that being a Christian means that you can have so much beautiful things in your life. I just want to talk about some of the curses or some of the the destructive things of what happens when we're going against God's will. Um, Some of those things, and I just want to talk, it's actually in Galatians 5, 19 through 21. It says, when you follow the desires of your sinful nature, the results are very clear. Sexual immorality, 
impurity, lustful pleasures, idolatry, sorcery, which that's that word is pharmakia, it's the word for drugs, hostility, quarreling, jealousy, outbursts of anger, selfish ambitions, dissension, division, envy, drunkenness, wild parties, and other sins like these. Let me tell you again, as I have before, that anyone living that sort of life will not inherit the kingdom of God. As I read that, I, I, I think, why would we want any of that in our life? You know, sexual immorality, I don't think anybody wants sexual immorality in their life. You know, I think that really hurts relationships. I don't think anybody wants selfish ambition where they're crushing other people in order to get their way. Drunkenness, you know, I mean, I, I, those that are listening, you, you probably have seen so many people have been hurt from drugs and alcohol and people making bad decisions because they were selfishly choosing drugs and alcohol over themselves, not to mention the deaths that have been caused by them. And so that's one thing I believe that Christ wants to set us free from. He wants to set us free from those oppressions of those evil things. And he wants to give us life and life more abundantly. And we're going to talk about what that means to choose that. Another thing I want to talk about, and I think this is something that's been a, a hard topic, but a lot of people don't even believe in a literal hell anymore. Right. And that's another thing when it talks about blessings and curses, there's also eternity where our soul is going to be. And there's a verse I have it right here is Matthew 25, 46. It says, and they will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous will go into eternal life. And that word for eternal is both the same for eternal life, which means going to be to heaven with going into heaven with God and being in his presence versus the alternative and that means alternative punishment or uh, eternal punishment which is a terrifying thing because again that's I, I believe the the hardest thing about eternal punishment is that we're gonna never you would never get to see the beauty of God and be in his presence for all eternity and this the torment of that so I think it's important to understand what that is you know but through Christ and through the beauty of Christ we can be set free another verse I have is second Timothy 2 26 it says they will come to their senses and escape from the devil's trap for they've been held captive by him to do whatever he wants. And so when we're being held by the captive by the enemy, we fall into these things, but through Christ, we can have abundant life. We can live a life that is free from these things and we can enjoy so many more things. I'm going to continue on to the next verse of Deuteronomy 30. Now I call on heaven and earth to witness the choice you make. Oh, that you would choose life so that you and your descendants might live. I wanted to talk a little bit about our will. You know, the will of man is such an interesting thing. I, I don't fully understand it. You know, um, I don't understand as much our will as far as, I mean, and then there's God's sovereignty, how we have a free will despite God being completely sovereign. Uh, it's beyond me, as we always say, but I think it's powerful to think that well, the Old Testament talks about the heart. And the heart is known as the decision maker. And so we have a heart and we have the ability to make decisions in our life. Um, you know, hey, if I want to go to the grocery store, I can go to the grocery store. If I want to, you know, do push-ups, I can do push-ups. You know, our, our, my heart is a decision maker. I have a lot of decisions I can make. But there's also God's will. So there's our will and then there's God's will. And there's a question of whether they are aligned with each other. So I kind of want to just share a little story. It's from Ezekiel 18. And there's this idea that um, in Ezekiel 18, you have the story of the father, the son, and a grandson, right? So a father, a son, and a grandson. So this father is a righteous man, and he chooses with his will to do what's right and just and to pursue the Lord. And so then he has a son, but the son instead chooses to act in wickedness, to deceive people, to take people's debts and, and, and take abundant amounts of interest. And so he pursues wickedness. So then that son has a son who's the grandson, right? And that grandson, he sees his father's wickedness and he chooses to turn against it and he chooses to follow righteousness. And so you have this example of three different wills, right? You have somebody that has chose to do what's right. You have somebody that has chosen to do what's wrong. And then you have somebody that despite growing up seeing wickedness, he turns away from that and chooses to do what's right. And that's why I think is important that, you know, no matter where you've come from, no matter what you've, you know, where you've come from or what your family believes, you can make that personal choice to follow Christ. That's one thing that I love. Christianity is open to anyone. 
that wants to willfully choose Christ. Everyone can make that choice to know him. And it doesn't matter if you've come through a hard background or what you've come through. Everyone has opportunities. It says all who call in the name of Christ can be saved. Uh, and so that's one thing I think is so wonderful. But to go along with that will, right? We have our own will and we can make a choice with our will, right? We can choose a lot of things. And so we can either choose to follow Christ or we can choose to follow other things. And, uh, and we can either choose truth, right? And, and that's where I want to quote the verse, John 14, 6. It says, Jesus told him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. So we can either make the choice to follow Christ or we can make the choice to deny him. And we have the ability to do that with our, with our will. And that's where I want to share the salvation verse. And that's to say, you know, if you, you know, many of you that are watching, you know, maybe you're coming to Christ for the first time, or maybe we're going to talk more if you've been following Christ for a long time, but you guys can make that choice to continue to choose Christ. But I love uh, the salvation message, you know, what we say when we really choose Christ. And that's in Romans 10, 9 through 11. It says, if you openly declare that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised from the dead, you will be saved. And that's the cool thing. Again, we're talking about making that willful choice, that personal choice to choose Christ, to say, I believe what the Bible says. Right? Like we said, I believe that this is the truth and the authority of God. And so I believe it's, it's, we have to make a choice to openly declare that Jesus is Lord and accept him in our hearts. Again, it's part of that will, choosing in our own hearts, saying like, my decision is to follow the Lord. And again, I believe that decision is made because Christ intervenes in our heart. He does a working in our heart and he brings us to know him. Um, but as we saw in Ezekiel 18, I believe that every individual is responsible for that. So if your parents are Christians, but you were just raised as a Christian, that doesn't make you a Christian. Every individual person has to choose their own way. And, and, and we have the choice personally to choose Christ. And that's one thing I see a lot. I call it piggyback Christianity, where a lot of people are like, yeah, I guess I'm a Christian. I was raised in the church. I was taught the teachings. But sometimes we don't ever actually make that personal choice to say, you know what? I've been taught this a lot. It's always been around me. But have I made the personal choice to make Christ Lord of my life? Have I made the personal choice to really let the word of God be the complete authority of my life? And that's where I want to focus on the second aspect, and that's the idea of the single choice versus the continual choice, right? And I relate it to a wedding. You know, sometimes we can make such a big deal of the single choice, right? The, 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 the initial choice. I'll use the example like, there's people that get married and at their wedding day, their wedding is huge. It's this amazing experience, right? They make this huge declaration that they're getting married to someone. And it's that one choice, right? Hey, it's the single choice to say, I do. But after that, after getting married, you're going you're gonna to have this continual choice to love your spouse. It's an everyday abiding and I, I think what's amazing is sometimes we are so focused. I see this even when I'm trying to minister to people. We're so focused on making that initial choice to Christ such a big deal that we fail to recognize that second part of being a Christian. And that's the daily walk, the daily continual choosing of abiding in Christ. And I think that's really missing from Christianity. I think we're going to be hopefully talking about revival at our church. But one of the things that is that's we've had a problem with revivals is a lot of people have these initial great experiences of choosing Christ. They say, I do, but then their marriage is falling apart because they never actually make time to choose Christ continually. And so that's where I believe it says Matthew 3, 2, repent of your sins and turn to God for the kingdom of God is near. And so I just want to talk about a couple of things. There's willful defiance, there's willful pursuance of self, and then there's willful abiding. And I think there are people, right, they never make that choice to follow Christ. They're constantly just defying him, like rejecting him, like I don't want God. 
But then there's people that are like, I guess I want God, but they're still pursuing them themselves. They're still pursuing their own selfish desires. But then I think as Christians, a repentant heart means that we're constantly dying to ourself. As Paul himself said, we die daily. You know, he says, I die daily. And I, or we're constantly throwing off the old nature and putting on the new nature, saying, God, I'm, I'm surrendering my well, will continually under the word of God and under the Father. You know, and that's one thing I think that it really means to be a Christian is to make that continual choice to pursue Christ and to continue to, to let parts of yourself surrender. You know, I, I, even now I'm walking with Christ for six and a half years, I'm still seeing areas in my life that are not surrendered to God that he's still working in. And that's again where we see that there's that initial choice to find Christ where we're saved, right? We're justified. But then there's that sanctification, that, that continual choice where God is continuing to clean me. It's not like I'm losing salvation when I fall short of that, but I'm continuing to be cleansed. And so that's what I think it means to be born again, right? In order to be born again, you have to kind of die. And that dying to the self, right? Dying to your old nature. And I think that Christianity has really lost that. We really don't want to let go of our old self. We want Christ and our selfish desires. But I think if we really, if you, if we really want to be close to Christ, we need to have a relationship that is continuing to die to self and continuing to accept because because God is so much greater for us. But that also means that if we want to grab onto God, we also need to let go of ourselves. Let's continue. Deuteronomy 30 it says, You can make this choice by loving the Lord your God, obeying him, and committing yourself firmly to him. This is the key to your life. So I just want to talk about you know, we're going to talk about those three, some of those three points about uh, loving the Lord and obeying him and committing yourself firmly to him. But one thing I want to touch on is the idea of falling short, right? I believe that when we willfully choose God, we willfully choose to abide in him. We still will fall short. We're human. But as long as we're saying, hey, God, I'm willing, or as I love what Pastor Craig says sometimes, I'm willing to be made willing. Sometimes I'm like, God, I really do want to do your will. I want to align my heart with your will, but I'm struggling right now. And God, help me to align my heart with your will. I think if we come and approach God with that, if that's the heart of Christianity, that's a humble heart, a contrite heart that says, God, I don't want to war against your will. I want my will to match your will. I want my heart to beat to the same rhythm of your heart. I think that's where we'll truly see revival, where we really say, God, I want my heart to match what your word says. But I think sometimes, you know, even, even walking with Christ for many years, we can sometimes realize that our heart loses its alignment with God and we need to come back to him and ask for our heart to be realigned with him. And I talk of Romans 7, uh, 18 through 19 says, I, you know, I know what's good, but my heart struggles. There, see, there's nothing good that dwells within me for the willing is present, but the doing of good is not. And that's why I think we need to be we need to realize that even though we may be pursuing Christ, we may fall short, but that's all right. I encourage you. I encourage those that are really pursuing God and sometimes they're, they're hurting because they're falling short to know that that's the kind of heart that God works with. But I want to convict those or warn those who believe that they don't have those convictions. Be like, you know, and I, I just kind of do what Christ wants. I don't, I think we really need to take seriously that idea of pursuing Christ. But let's talk about three of the things that that verse says. It says, love the Lord. And one of the verses I love is Ephesians 5, uh, 10. It says, carefully determine what pleases the Lord. And as I was reading this, this shook me a little bit. Again, God's word sometimes shakes me. And I love that. It shakes me because it makes me realize where my heart and where my will is not aligned with his. And it says, and I just love the idea that we need, we sometimes need to take time to ask God to help realign our heart with his. That's what it means. That's what I believe it means to cry out to him in humility. And that's what I'd ask those of you are watching, whether you've, you're coming to Christ for the first time or thinking about it, or whether you've been walking with Christ, do you spend time to say, God, I want to understand your will more. God, I think one verse we always quote is Psalms 139, 23 through 24. It says, search me, O God, know my heart. 
you know, point out anything that offends you and lead me the path of eternal life. We need to cry out to God and say, God, where is my heart not aligned with yours? We need to commit ourselves firmly to him. Uh, sorry, obeying him. So God's word says, if you love me, obey my commandments. If we're struggling to follow God, we need to cry out to God and say, God, I'm struggling to love you. Help me have the desires to love you. And lastly, we want to commit ourselves firmly to him, right? I love one of my favorite verses is Isaiah 50, verse 7. It says, because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone. I've hardened my heart against everything except to do his will. And I know that I will not be put to shame. And so that's what I mean. I believe it mean, what it means to be a, truly a Christian, to choose Christ, is to harden yourself against everything else that is not God's will and to align yourself with the word of God and say, you know, if it's, if it's not aligned with the heart of God's word, then I don't want it. And I think, again, we're so focused on that initial experience of the, the emotions that we get first accepting Christ. It's the same thing I think the reason marriages are falling apart today is we get so excited about the big wedding day. But that continual surrendering, that continual pursuance, that continual abiding is missing. And that's what I think, that's what it really means to be a Christian. It means to continually seek the heart of God. I just want to end with a couple of verses. Matthew 7, 22 through 23 says, On judgment day, many will say to me, Lord, Lord, we prophesied in your name and cast out demons in your name and performed many miracles in your name. But I will reply, I never knew you. Get away from me, you who break God's laws. What I think that means is people, they may make a lot of sacrifices, but their will slowly does not align with God's will. They do things in their own selfish ambition. Look at how many people I'm healing. Look at all these amazing miracles I'm doing and I'm slapping Christ's name on it. But I think that we need to come underneath the truth rather than trying to make God, you know, slapping our will with Christ's name on it. And I think another verse is run from anything that's, this is 2 Timothy 2.22, run from anything that simulates youthful lusts instead pursue righteous living faithfulness love and peace again you see that pursuing enjoy the companionship of the those who call on the lord with pure hearts and that goes to the next uh verse of deuteronomy 30 the last one it says and if you love and obey the lord you will live long in the land of the lord swore to swore to give your ancestors abraham isaac and jacob and so I just want to say, I, there's so much beauty. There is life and life more abundantly when we choose Christ. The truth sets us free. It, it, it delivers us from darkness. It, it's, it, it allows us to have beautiful relationships. Again, we can enjoy the fellowship of our companions because they also have that same heart aligned with God. We can all walk together towards the truth. We, you know, the, There's a beauty when we're all driving the way that we're supposed to drive a car on the same, you know, on the part of the road that we're supposed to drive, traffic works well, right? But when people don't follow the traffic instructions and things like that, you have chaos, you have people getting hurt, you have destruction. It's the same with God's word when we're following the word of God. And that, that doesn't mean, I still believe that being a Christian means you will go through hard times, you will go through persecution, you will go through hardships, but you still have the peace of Christ. You still can rely on him and rest in him. So um, a couple of verses I just want to share that hopefully can give you encouragement. As again, I, I hope that you make that choice to say, you know what? I have my will and I'm going to give my will to God. I'm going to align my will with his will. I'm going to surrender whatever my own will is and I'm going to surrender it under the word of God. And this is what I believe you will experience if you do that. Philippians 4, 7 says, then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. Another verse I love is this. It says Isaiah 26, 3. It says, you will keep in perfect peace all who trust in you, all whose thoughts are fixed on you. And so I just encourage you. I, I mean, I, I just say that I've seen that in my life that and I fall short a lot but 
I pray every day. I say, God, I, I truly want to just continually choose to love you. And he gives me the strength to do that. But as he continues to help me through that, I have experienced such peace in my life despite the hardest of things. I've experienced such a love and a joy. I've seen the, the beauty of relationships with other people where I have true friendships and true sincere uh, family. And so I just encourage you guys to check your will. Say, am I willfully rejecting God, which is the truth? Am I willfully choosing my selfish desires, which again is also still rejecting God? Or am I, am I taking time to say, God, help me to align my heart with yours. And I promise you, if you continue to pray for that, God will continue over time to continue to bring your heart in alignment with his. So thank you guys so much for listening. Um, if you haven't already, please make sure to like and subscribe and share this video. If you would like to listen to wherever you get your podcasts, uh, just type in Calvary Conversations. Uh, you can also follow us on Instagram for our behind the scenes at Calvary Conversations. Also, this is a listener supported podcast. So if you would like to donate to the podcast, you can do that by going to the description below and clicking donate. So thank you guys so much for listening and God bless.